Hey, I'm talking here. I just wish that somebody was listening. Oh, well. Okay, dokey. What are you all looking at? What? <laughs> like you start right away when you go to work? <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, Steve Rizzo here, and welcome to Hey, I'm Talking Here. Um, for those of you who have been watching, you know that this is a show about empowerment. This is a show that'll not only take you to a better place personally, but professionally, and in my view, that is absolutely the ultimate success. And this show is brought to you by The Bob Project, featuring conversations with Bob. And we will tell you more about The Bob Project and conversations with Bob a little later on in the show. But uh, see that? That's it. Conversations with Bob. And uh, that's a book that I wrote that's in print now. It should be coming out in about 20 years. And uh, not just kidding, but there is a big delay because of the printers uh, can't get the materials to print the book. And I think as many of you know that this whole country is on hold with stuff. I have friends that have a house in the Hamptons. Three months ago, they bought it and they still can't get furniture delivered to the house. Um, but anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Uh, but we will talk about Bob a little later on. Right now, I would love to introduce to you my team, my main people. And um, actually, without them, I wouldn't be able to do the show. First and foremost, let me introduce to you the director and producer. There he is, popping up, Mr. Enthusiasm himself, Bruce. Yeah. Hey, I've been drinking, so I got more enthusiasm today. <laughs> you can't even say enthusiasm you've been drinking. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of um, peppermint. How, how you doing today? You doing all right? Yep, good. Um, good. Surviving my 60-degree weather here in Chicago. Yeah, we got 60 degrees here on Long Island, too. That's pretty amazing. And and they say there's no such thing as uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. I know. You get your Christmas shopping done yet? I got it started. Does that count? Good. Good for you. Well, that's not what I asked you. I asked you if you got it done. It counts. It counts, but you got a lot to do. No, I usually finish up my Christmas shopping when the stores close Christmas Eve. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I'm usually the last one shopping. At least that, that was a couple of years ago. I guess now with this more um, online shopping, I'm probably not going to hit the mall as much. Oh, okay. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. I don't, I'm, I'm not buying anyone gifts this year, and I'll tell you why a little bit later on. I'm not buying anybody anything. Really? This Christmas, it's what about my needs, okay? That's, <laughs> that's, what, it, that's what it's about this year. Kellen Ann, are you there? Hello. Uh, there she is. There, there I am. Is the one and only, the lovely Kellen Ann. Kellen, Kellen Ann. You get Christmas shopping done? Hey, your hair looks really good right now. Well, thank you. I, I've got my curling iron plugged in just in case I need to touch it up during the show. Because How does mine look? You need to use my curling iron. <laughs> no, Christmas shopping. What happened? Is a is a bad thing in my house right now. I I my I have a gift giving business. Right. So I've shopped or made gifts for everybody else, but my poor family is suffering right now. And but then when you said you're not giving any gifts, that doesn't include me, right? Um. Huh. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll give you a gift. I make you laugh, don't I? Yes, you do. And that's the best gift. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. That's what uh, that's what this is all about. This whole show. It's laughter in the Christmas spirit, which is why I love our, our guest that's going to be coming. I want you to tell me a little bit about Greg. Well, he is a TikTok phenom, in my opinion. Um, I found him when I first started listening to watching TikToks, which are everybody's watching, apparently everybody but me up until a couple months ago. Um, he's got 1.9 million followers and he takes everyday situations and find his, his whole theme is find your joy. And that just connected with me. And as soon as you started, you know, talking to me and we were going to do this show, I thought he's got to be one of our guests because you, you're all about finding joy and, and laughter. And those are two really good combination, I think. Yeah. They're synonymous. So that's perfect. It's a perfect segue right into it. And I know he has a lot to offer and I, I've heard of him also myself and we'll be, we'll be talking about uh, him just a little late, later on. But um, 
first, we have to do the Rizzo memo. The Rizzo memo. 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 <laughs> this just in, hot off the presses. Isn't this supposed to be the season to be jolly? Yep, most people I know this time of year are usually pretty grumpy. So this holiday season, I've decided I'm not going to give any gifts. I'm going to give the wonderful gift of laughter. Plus, it's a great way not to spend money on someone that you really don't want to spend money on to begin with. Not including you, Kellen Ann. Don't worry about it. You will get a gift. But seriously, folks, laughter truly is one of our greatest gifts. But what good is a gift that we don't use? That's the question. Now, I understand that there are times when your problems are so overwhelming that you don't want to laugh. And I get that. I respect that. We've all been there. I've been there. But understand this. If at any time you're feeling you can't find anything to laugh about, well, that's exactly when you need it most. Just as mourning and grieving are essential in order to heal, so too is our ability to temporarily step away from the craziness or even the pain for just only a few minutes to seek the joy in other aspects of our lives. And I believe that the main reason why some people don't allow themselves to laugh when times are tough is because they're overwhelmed by negative emotions. I've heard people come up to me and say, Steve, how do you expect me to laugh when I was just diagnosed with cancer? Steve. How do you expect me to find the laughter when I have friends who are really having a tough time right now with this pandemic? Hey, you know what, Steve? I know it's really important to life, but I just I just lost my job and this economy sucks. So how do you expect me to take time out to laugh? Well, you want to know what, folks? Here's the hard part about this. This is the hard truth. But I really want you to get this. That's when you're supposed to laugh, when times are tough, because that's when you need it most, because laughter is the pit stop in the rat race of life and that it gives you enough emotional fuel and repairs to get back into the race again. And I think it's that essential. And I think this is really an important point. It's essential that we all understand that there is a difference between laughing at something that's very serious and allowing yourself to laugh off the fear that it represents. And I believe that that's the number one reason why each and every one of us are given this gift of laughter. It's to laugh in the face of fear and a host of other negative emotions that bombard us every day. And I think Mark Twain, one of my favorite authors, said it best. Not even fear can stand against the assault of laughter. You know, my first book came out in 1999 called Becoming a Human Being. And I um, talked to and discussed with many different groups, nurses and doctors who worked in the emergency ward at hospitals and uh, firemen and police, police officers of all kinds. And one of, the, one of the groups that really affected me the most is when I interviewed uh, military people. And what I got from them is that twisted humor of all kinds is used as an emotional shield to protect the military and civilians alike in times of war. Just as a helmet or a shelter is used to protect their physical selves from harm's way on and off the battlefield in business or in life, folks, you can turn painful situations with just a simple ability to laugh. If you can find the humor in absolutely anything at all, you can survive it. And that is the Rizzo memo for today. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I appreciate it. Kellen Ann, are you there? I know I had something to say about what you just said and no, I forgot it. But I do I did hear from a little birdie that Francesco's 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 may be joining in today, viewing us. Right here. And I forgot to use this as brought to you by this is yeah. Francesco's. This is um Francesco's yeah. is the cheers of all restaurants. This is the place where I go to unwind. This is a place where friends meet. This is a place where they have great food, great wine, great service, a great owner. His name is Frank. And, uh, you know, we talk about joy. We talk about laughter. And every now and then you need that place where you can go and just unwind. And Francesco's, which is in Babylon, New York, Babylon, Long Island, New York, check it out. Come on in and enjoy and have the fun. Just don't sit in my seat at the bar. That's all I'm asking. And Stephanie, 
I, I saw your message there. I love you. Stephanie's one of the people that works there. She's one of the managers. She's a hard worker. She's one of my favorite people, not just at Francesco's, but in my life. I really love that woman. And we have Lisa, my director of business. How about me? Do I get a gift? Yeah, you'll get a gift. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> and there's my friend, John. Nice sweater. It's not a sweater, John. It's a sweatshirt. You were there when I got the sweatshirt. You know it's not a sweat. Nice sweatshirt. <laughs> A sweet shirt. Yeah. It's yeah. a sweet shirt. So, okay. So you went from giving gifts to nobody mm -hmm. to everybody but me almost. No, I'm giving you, I'll get you a gift. Now I'm saying it in front of a lot of people right now. You will get a gift from, even if I have to, oh no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not flying to deliver a gift to you. I'm not flying to Atlanta to give you a gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Honestly, you, to, not to sound too mushy or smushy, but you do make me laugh and cheer me up a lot. And that is a huge gift. And I get I that every making, day, not just for Christmas. I, I love making people laugh. That's why I started doing stand-up. You know, my father would look at my report card when I was a kid and he'd go, what are you, a comedian? And after a while it wore off. <laughs> but, um, you know, and I, as I said to you many times, and I think I said this on one of my episodes, uh, I, I knew the healing power of, of humor at a very early in my uh, early stage of my life. And even when I was on stage, I noticed that... Um, there were people in the audience experiencing challenging times of some kind. Maybe they were going through a divorce, financial difficulties, whatever. But for those few hours, when I was on stage at the club, their challenges or problems didn't own them because they very simply allowed themselves to take time out to laugh. I've always said that laughter is the pit stop in the rat race of life and that it gives you enough emotional fuel and repairs to get back into the race again. I know I said that in my, in my Rizzo gram, but I can't stress it enough. And we have Eric Bam, finding the humor. Joy in bad situations is the key to growth. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And you know what the problem is, though? <laughs> Want to share a few meatballs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to answer that, actually, to tell you the truth. The problem is, Eric, is that most people wait for times to be uh, pleasant for them when things to go right before they find the laughter. And I just, um, you know, that's not it. It's a, you're supposed to find it when times are tough. And I know it's not easy, but the more you dig in and the more you try to find the humor in challenging situations, the easier it becomes. And that's what we want to do. That's what this program is about. It's about making your life easier than it has to be. And being on stage and making people laugh was one of the greatest feelings on the planet, actually. Just working with you is a gift. Oh, really, Lisa? You know, she's saying that right now because now she knows I'm going to have to give her a gift. It's working with you Wait, is a gift. Before I forget, what? you had we were sharing a story today about a friend of yours and a oh, yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that's a great That would point. be good right here. That'd yeah, be right it, here. It, 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 it fits perfect. Um, you know, and by the way, you know what? I, I, I was blessed my whole life I, for two reasons. To, I have a great memory, and it just amazes me how in my comedy career, when I never thought I was going to become a motivational speaker, um, life had a way, or a higher power had a way of throwing people my way, which I use as examples now as a speaker. And in 1992, I was performing at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles, which was the premier club to be noticed by the industry. I mean, very famous people would come in and try out the material there and everything. And uh, uh, one particular night I was backstage and I was uh, standing next to another comic by the name of Steve Moore. And I know he doesn't mention, uh, uh, Matt, uh, it doesn't bother, bother him if I use his name. This was what, 30 years ago. And um, I haven't seen him in a while. And I said, hey, Steve, I haven't seen you. I said, how are you doing? Is everything okay? He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. I go, things are going great then. And I noticed he wanted to say something. And he looked at me, he goes, I don't know if you know this. He said, but um, I just came back from the doctors. And uh, recently I was diagnosed with HIV positive. Now, Kellen Ann, when you were diagnosed with HIV positive back then, it was real serious because it wasn't any med medication to help you to deal with this. And uh, I said, wow, I'm really sorry to hear that. I said, well, how are you dealing with it? And he says, well, watch me. I said, what do you mean? Watch you. He goes, I'm going on right after you. Watch my set. Just watch my set. Now we had 20, he had a 20 minute spot. Folks, I want to tell you something. 
This guy went on stage, and I'm not going to tell you exactly what he said, but I will tell you this. He did the whole 20 minutes on being HIV positive, and he did a hysterical bit on the side effects he got from the medication. He had 400 to 500 people in that room in tears, hysterical, laughing. And as all this is going on, I'm dumbfounded. I'm looking at the comedians next to me backstage, and I'm saying, this guy is making people laugh at one of the biggest tragedies on the planet. And he's got them laughing their asses off in the audience right now. So he gets off the stage, he gets a standing ovation, he comes back, I give him a big hug. And I said, that was without a doubt one of the most incredible things I've ever seen anyone do on stage. And you made people laugh doing it. I said, there wasn't a dry eye in that audience. I said, you got a roaring standing ovation. He said, yeah, but you really want to hear the good news. And I said, yeah, I really do. And he goes, I've been doing this for a couple of months now. And I haven't seen him in a while because, you know, I've been traveling all over the country. And he goes, the good news is, is that my white blood count went up phenomenally ever since I've been able to deal with this situation from a humorous perspective. And he goes, and doctors and his psychologist that he was seeing, saying that your sense of humor is allowing you to take time out from what's happening to you to enjoy other aspects of your life. Two months after he told me that, HBO approached him and he got his own HBO special on um, uh, sickness and laughter, how they can help, how laughter, laughing off the fear can help you to deal with such a tragic uh, situation such as HIV positive. And right now at this point in his life, he's giving workshops all over the country on the healing power of humor. And, and, and that's what I mean about that it's a gift. It's a gift. And, and my point to everyone that's listening right now, and, and I think it's an important point, if, if you say you can't find something to laugh at, just think of what Steve Moore just did. Just think what he did with his life and how he turned it around. I can give you a lot of other stories. You know, there was another time uh, I was, uh, when I was writing my book, uh, Becoming a Humor Being, and uh, my friends were telling me before I published it and before I finished it, they said, you need a story of someone famous on how humor helped them to turn their life around from a tragic situation. And um, that I said a prayer. And that morning I sat on a plane and I was with, uh, I didn't realize it, but I'm sitting next to this very attractive woman wearing sunglasses. And I noticed on her boarding pass, it said Naomi Judd. She's sitting next to me. And uh, I, I knew who it was. And... Um, I, I knew that she had a terrible experience with hepatitis C mm -hmm. and we started talking about it. And when I told her what I did for a living, she was very, you know, very interested in what I had to say. And she told me about her whole ordeal with hepatitis C and the doctors gave her up for dead. They gave her six months to live, six months to live. And I said, would you say that? Uh, and she said, by the way, that was four years ago. I said, would you say that uh, humor helped you in any way? And she got very emotional and she grabbed my hand. She said, Stephen, if it wasn't for my sense of humor, I don't know if I would have been able to survive this. So her story was in my book towards the end of the book. And uh, yeah, it's called Humor, Hope and Love. And her story was at the end of the book. And she claims where her sense of humor turned her entire life around. And it helped her to bounce back to deal with all the treatments that she had to deal with. So wow. life is filled with examples, you know, uh, filled with tons of examples. I don't know. I, I could, I could, I could tell you so many other stories, but I think that's the main gist and why I wanted this particular show. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what? As a matter of fact, this is the perfect time right now to um, bring up uh, the word according to Bob. And before we bring it on, let me give an introduction to this. This um, this particular segment is called "Laughter in Extreme Adversity," and um, this is a true story. Another story that happened to me many years ago. And um, it really shook me to the core. And I think once you hear what's being said and watch this video, I think you'll all agree. Yeah. Hey, I'm talking. Hey. All right, folks. Bruce, hit it. Ready? Years ago, I attended the wake and funeral services of a dear friend. Now, I, I've been to many wakes and funeral services throughout the course of my life, but uh, there was something really special about this one in particular. 
awareness came over me that caused me to view the losses in my life from a totally different perspective. When the funeral service was over, a group of us met at a relative's house. Now, as you can imagine, there were still people consoling one another. But from across the room, I overheard someone telling a story about my friend. And I noticed that a few people were laughing along with it. And then someone else joined in on a conversation and told a story about my friend's love for football. And before long, everyone was in this room laughing and reminiscing about the good times they had. And in the midst of all of this laughter, I had a strange, uplifting, powerful feeling come over me. And, and, and this feeling can best be described as what I now call a smile from within. I realized I was no longer grieving over my friend. My energy level immediately shifted and I was temporarily delivered from my pain. And it wasn't just me. We all felt that special connection to him in that moment. In fact, his wife even said, you know, I, I, I miss him and I always will, but right now, I feel as if a part of him is with us and always will be. And then her brother jumped in and said, yeah, I know what you mean. It's as if he's saying to all of us, it's okay, I'm okay. Everything is as it should be. And I will always be with you. At that given moment, my friend's death was not the point of focus. The only thing that mattered to all of us was the powerful feeling we were all experiencing. And we were all celebrating and embracing our spirit of love for him. And I believe it was our ability to laugh and reminisce about the good times that ignited that powerful sense of spirit. In such a very short time, our humor beings took us from a place of pain and uncertainty to a place of inner peace and hope. Laughter made us realize that throughout our journey, there really are no goodbyes, only good memories. The spirit moves on and we all move on in turn in life. We all felt that smile from within that day. And I believe laughter derives from the spirit. It has a magical way of breaking down barriers and constantly reminds us that somehow, some way, we are all connected and never alone in our times of grief. Suffering may be unavoidable, but just plain suffering can be avoided. Finding the laughter in between the tough times is essential to living a happier, healthier life. And that, my friends, is the word according to Bob. I love that. And that's the word according to Bobby. We call him Bobby here. Now, for those of you who want to know who Bob is, by the way, folks, if you have any questions at all, anybody want to make any comments, just send them true. Send them true. Um, let me explain to you who Bob is and what's this all about. The Bob Project is uh, something that uh, hit me about eight years ago. I started writing the book eight years ago. And from the book, a lot of other things started evolving, like a TV series and a play. And I'm involved in all this stuff. And I'm trying to get all this stuff together. And it's a blast doing it. And a lot of people want to know who Bob is. And I could say to you, you know what? Read the book and you'll find out. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to say. Read the book and you'll find out. Bob, though, is of your higher nature. He's the part of you that always brings out the best in you when times get really tough. Bob has the uh, uh, answers to all your questions. Bob has the solutions to all your problems. All you have to do is learn how to connect and communicate with this higher part that we all have within us. And uh, the book shows you how. It's very simple. It's uh, very entertaining. And when it comes out, everyone will uh, have an opportunity to purchase the book if you would like. And if you don't, there's going to be a guy named Vinny knocking on your door. See, it says here, a timeless, entertaining dialogue for living an extraordinary life. I made that up. Actually, Bob helped me to make that up. Well, folks, it doesn't You're good that way. I'm sorry? I said you're good that way. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's one of the reasons why you and I get along so good, too. We mm -hmm. immediately, it was our sense of humor that connected us. You know, we just started. But you said I scared you at first. Well, you scared the hell out of me at first. Yeah, I think I scare a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. I just got a message from Greg. And yeah. he has said he's trying. He's been having, he's been having internet problems with at his house. And he's trying. He's going to try and write. He's trying right now to get on. So I if not. Him. I have a surprise guest for you lined up. You have a surprise guest right now? Lined up for you, yeah. I'm if, wearing if... I'm wearing bedazzled <laughs> pants. You know, Eric, there's definitely something wrong with you. I want you to know that right now. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh my god. 
Send a photo of your pants or something. Do something here. Who do we have as a special guest? Eric Bam. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was perfectly teed up. You know, well, by the way, I'm, I'm, well, I should probably sit down. I'm not wearing bedazzled pants, but he's but not wearing I, any pants. <laughs> I, I, I am wearing assless chaps. Is, is, am I allowed to say that? So. <laughs> Um, I can't believe you. I I wanted to just jump on on here for a second because maybe your guess is a little delayed, and I just well, my guess is going to be dead any minute now. Well, so don't worry about it. I, I just wanted to share a conversation I had with Kellen the other day that I felt like was oh, great man. for this show. Um, was we were talking about you know just all of the distraction of 2021, right? Yeah. Whether it's you know I'm I'm literally going through a divorce, just finalized today, right? Going through a divorce, buying a new house. Kellen literally moved cross country this year, right? Got a new job. There are so many people dealing with COVID and finances and all this stuff. And we were talking the other day just about how great 2022 can be and just a huge bounce back year for so many people because the distraction is all gone. Like for me, the, the distraction is gone. And I was wildly successful this year. For Kellen Ann, the distraction is gone. And for people, the distraction of COVID, and which is – maybe kind of dying, maybe kind of not, who knows, maybe it's here forever, but, but we, we all deal with stuff. And I think for a lot of us, the last couple of years have been so taxing and so stressful that I think 2022 is going to be just such a platform for some great stuff. If people will let it happen. Yeah. If, so. if, but that's the key. If, if, yeah. if they do, you can't wait for the good times. You can't wait for opportunities. You have to make the good times and you yeah. have to make the opportunities yourself. You really yeah. do. I learned that the hard way, man. I mean, you're, and, and that's okay though. That's why I'm able to do what I do today because my main goal is to show people how to make their lives easier by not making the mistakes that I made. Right. You know, and, right. and, and, you know, and, and boy, and ha believe me, there are a lot of them, but I, I appreciate that. And, and Eric, Thanks for coming on, man. I, I appreciate that. Stay on a little longer if you don't mind. No, um, I'd, I'd, lo I'd love to stay on. You're you're one of my favorite people in the world now. I have your cell phone number. I constantly think about just like sending you texts of, you know, pictures of me and my my assless chaps, but <laughs> I haven't done it yet. So That's great. Love you, Joan. Thank you. Love you too. I love, love the Joan people at Francesco's. <laughs> and there's John. Hey, Frank Rizzo. See, John knows. I, I probably said that earlier. Hey, John, you want to share a couple of meatballs? You thought hey, I was Johnny. talking to you. I was talking to John. So, <laughs> Eric, you know who you look like right now? You just remind me of the guitar player from Cheap Trick. Yes, he does. <laughs> there, you're welcome. There you that's, how, that's how I roll. I hear that's that all the, the time. Hat. It's the hat, the way you're wearing it. Yeah. See, Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you know, like I said, I think I think this year, this coming up year, is going to be a big year for a lot of people. Now, I will say one of the funny things about life is we look at like. January 1st and we look at it as this poll to start, you know, from poll to poll. And the reality is, man, for me, it starts today, it starts tomorrow. You know, it, we, why wait two weeks to, to kick off a new, better year when it's yeah. in front of me? Yeah. You know what? I, yeah. I love that. I love that. But you know what? I think people's New Year's resolution should be not to make a resolution. Yeah. Just live your life. Don't put a date. Don't put a time limit on anything. Just say, you know, and don't even say how. I think some of the worst things you could say, one of the worst words you could say to yourself is, how am I going to do this? Just say why you want to do it. Give yeah. the why and say, this year, I'm going to do this. Why? And then you give your because. Whatever yeah. that may be. Is it to make a difference in someone's life? Is it because you need more money? Whatever it is. When yeah. you say how, that's what scares the shit out of people. Yeah. It's the how, because then you overwhelm yourself. Like just a few days ago, someone was asking me about the, they're writing a book and they they wanted to know what the format is. Is there, is there some kind of other principles? And I said, just start writing it. Then yeah. all of a sudden you could hear it in their voice when they, and look at it. You could see the lines in their face. But but how am I supposed to get a, a, a publisher and how do I get it edited? And how do I said, no, you don't. Don't worry about the how. You want to write a book. Why? And immediately they told me why. I said, go from there. The how's come. Uh, one one thought I have on New Year's resolutions, I've been thinking about this, this this week as I'm setting some up for myself, is we focus on so much stuff we want to take out of our life, which is hard. And we need to focus on things we want to pour into our life because that's the win, is to pour great stuff in, not to take stuff out. Pour great stuff in. So I... Steve, I love you. Kellen, I love you far more than Steve. You all have a great Christmas if I don't talk to you all again. And um, peace.
Hey, Eric, thank you so much. Thanks, yep, Eric. See you guys. Bye. Thank you, man. And uh, Kel and Ann, thank you as always. And uh, Bruce, if you want to pop your face up here to, there he is. That's Bruce. That's the director, producer of the show. Great. Hello. And uh, thank you all for watching. Hey, I'm talking here. This show gets better every time I do it. This is only my fourth episode. And uh, I love the guests that we have so far. And mm -hmm. I wish you all the very best. Uh, see you in, I think, another two weeks. Right, Bruce? From now on, it's going to be Thursday nights. And we're going to have Greg tune in two days before so he makes it on time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell him it's sure like two hours earlier. It's not a problem. I really mean it. I'm only kidding with you. Hey, so, if you play uh, your cards right, Steve watch. will pay for your internet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just lost connection with Kellen, too. <laughs> I know you guys are going to have the show next time without me. <laughs> I think we will. <laughs> yep. I love you all. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Take Thanks, care, Greg. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, bye, bye.